Hi, I'm Daniel Hunt. I'm a certified specialist in estate planning, trust, and probate law. Today, I'm going to share five questions to ask yourself before creating a estate plan. These five questions will prompt you to think carefully through what you want to have happen in the future. Question one, who do you want to be your executor and successor trustee? The executor of your will and successor trustee of your trust should be the same person to avoid conflicting powers. Who should you choose to serve in this position? Choose a person who has good judgment and integrity. Many clients choose a trusted family member or close friend to serve in this position. For married couples, their first choice is often their spouse with a trustworthy relative or a friend as a backup. Can you choose to have multiple people serve as co-trustees? Well, yes, but we don't typically recommend having more than two. Having fewer people involved in a trust administration allows for a quicker and easier decision-making process and a less expensive trust administration since it can be costly to double or triple all the communication with the supervising attorney. Here's another essential trait. Your successor trustee must be able to communicate and deal impartially with your beneficiaries. If family dynamics are challenging, like families where the grown children struggle to get along, consider selecting a professional fiduciary to serve in this position. Sometimes it's easier for an outsider to remain unbiased and impartial to all the parties in trust administrations. Question number two, to whom do I want to leave my assets? Many clients choose to leave their estate equally to the children if they have any children, but that isn't the only option. Do you wish to include extended families such as grandchildren, nieces, nephews, etc.? Are there nonprofits or educational institutions you'd like to add to your distribution? Here's a pro tip. Be careful including caregivers in any distribution scheme to avoid the appearance of undue influence. Now, consider if there's anyone you wish to specifically exclude from your distribution. Common examples include a child who's estranged from the family, a biological child you placed for adoption a long time ago, or a child who struggles with addiction for whom a large inheritance would be destructive. Also, a disabled child who could lose access to government benefits if they receive an inheritance. A better option for them may be a special needs trust. Question number three, how do I want the funds to be distributed? Here are a few examples. You could give a percentage of your total estate. For example, 25% of my estate equal to my four children. A lump sum, for example, $5,000 to Bob Smith. Installments, for example, $10,000 per year to my niece until the estate assets are gone. For beneficiaries who are currently minors, you'll need to decide at what age they'll be receiving their full inheritance and no longer have the funds managed by the successor trustee for their benefit. Because 18-year-olds don't always have the best financial judgment yet, the age of 25 is considered to be standard for those distributions. But you can adjust that age as you think it may be appropriate for your circumstances. Question four, who do you want to serve as your agent under your medical and financial powers of attorney? When it comes to an advanced healthcare directive or medical power of attorney, one major factor is the agent's location. Choosing an agent who lives near you often means they're more likely to be available in a medical emergency. Other than that, choose someone who you trust to work with well with medical staff and make medical choices on your behalf if you've become incapacitated. For your financial or durable power of attorney, the most vital consideration is integrity. Your power of attorney agent will have access to many of your financial assets. In fact, all of them. You want to choose someone you trust not to abuse that power. Usually this person is the same as your successor, trustee, and executor to avoid those conflicting powers. Question five. If I have minor children, who do I want to serve as their guardians? It can be difficult as a parent to imagine someone else raising your children, but designating a guardian allows you to make this choice if something happens to you rather than a judge who is unfamiliar with you and your family dynamic. To select a guardian, consider who'd best be able to meet the physical, financial, and emotional demands of raising your children. Keep in mind factors like location, parenting skills, religious and moral beliefs, financial security, and their age or life stage where they're at. So that's it. Five questions to think through before creating your estate plan. We hope that answering these questions will help you feel prepared and confident when you meet with an estate planning attorney for the very first time. Thanks for listening. We hope you found this video helpful. And if you'd like more information on estate planning or our law firm, you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, or our website that are listed below. If you'd like to contact us, you can do so at 916-488-9788 or at our email, info at dhtrustlaw.com.